I think we are officially back and we are live. Everybody here is coming back and sitting down because we're just about to get started with our next incredible speaker. You're gonna love this next discussion. And I think the AV guys are working on our mics right now. Let's give them just another minute. And as you can probably tell, I'm sitting in the seat of a, uh, of a very good man named Dr. Bill Williams. I've taken over his seat. He had to step away for just a minute. So while we're waiting for the AV crew to mic us back up, I think we'll be good here in just a second. There we go, and now, now we're live. <laughs> we're officially live online and in real life. Amazing. <laughs> so what should we cover before we start back up? Well, first off, uh, for the people that are watching online, I think it's uh, very important to understand that we are having very uh, strict rules. You have to sign in within the first 10 minutes. Uh, so the sign in link will be posted at the bottom. Don't worry, if you sign in, you will get your CE. Um, the next thing is, is we have have a new feed here so we want to make sure that you share this post if you could please share this post uh, to all the Facebook groups in dentistry that would be absolutely phenomenal uh, we have an amazing speaker that I'm gonna let dr. Bill introduce here uh, not uh, dr. Brady Frank uh, and he has some magnificent energy that he wants to share with you all dr. Bill Dr. Brady Frank is not only a great dentist, he's a friend of mine, he's been one of my mentors, and so I learned so much from him, so so glad to be able to introduce my friend. He's in private practice for over 25 years, through his own experience of having over 28 associates since the mid-2000s, he's very experienced in running many multi-level dental practices. He's created several business models that have allowed hundreds of dentists to grow their practice and transition from where they were to freedom. His book is actually called Transition Time. We good? I read it. It's got 14 modules on practice transition and it talks about how to expand sensibly. So he details the most common vertical companies related to multiple sources of income. Now one of them you're going to hear about today. You're going to be so excited. So let's bring on Dr. Brady Frank. Me too. Uh, stay at the front. All the way from Oregon. Hey guys, how's it going? You having a good time? How are Facebook Live people? You doing good? Awesome, awesome. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, history here. This right here is called a DVD. This is called a CD, a compact disc. That's how we used to do it. So it's really cool that we're doing it on Facebook today. This is actually a lecture I did right here at the Profitable Dentist meeting in 2009. I was here, I had, uh, uh, I ate a bunch of, uh, what was it? Well, we had edamame with uh, Mark Costas, I remember. Mark Costas is a Marquette uh, uh, dental school, not classmate, he was one class away from mine. We had a great time. But this is my fifth time speaking for The Profitable Dentist. So excited that we're actually doing it in the new world, the Facebook world, which is awesome, which is awesome. So we're just gonna throw these guys away because we don't need them anymore. And so let's, let's, let's get going. Let's get going on what I'm chatting about today, which is the DDSO. So many of you are saying, what, did he stutter? Was he meaning to say DSO? So, a DDSO is what I term a dentist-owned practice or group, whether it be a multiple doctor location, whether it be a multiple doctor multiple location practice. And uh, I did an article series in Dental Economics um, the last three months of 2017, October, November, and December. And uh, anyway, it, uh, it ended up being a big, a big hit. I'm turning my phone off because we were rushing with the, with the stuff here. There it is. It was a, a big hit and they invited me back to do a five-part article series on the DDSO this year, but what we're doing is going over case studies of dentists that have emulated the DDSO model or models and put in place streams of income, funnel stacked, we're gonna go over that today. So I'm gonna be going over the three secrets that I've learned over the last 19 years in putting together this DDSO concept. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is shave about 10 years off your learning curve, so you don't have to do it the hard way, you can do it the easy way. So just real quick, a little 
teaser at the beginning here, we want to go from higher taxes to lower taxes. Um, they made fun of Mitt Romney during the last election, or the one before actually, because he was in the 15% tax bracket. How many of you dentists out there would love to be paying 15% on your taxes? Absolutely. So we're going we're gonna to talk about how to get your taxes way down using the DDSO model. We're also going to be talking about how to convert wet finger income, that's in the mouth income, to business income. That's secret number two. We're going to go all into that. Number three, it may sound like a lot of work what I'm going to be talking about today because I went through a lot of work to do it, but number three, we're going to be talking about how to reduce your time burden and automate it through all this newfangled tech stuff. We're going to be talking about funnel stacking, automating through funnels, chat bots, email automation, everything that creates an ideal business, an automated business. That's how corporate America is going. Like Dr. Spodak spoke about earlier, automation. We're going to be talking about business systems that you can do, yes, even if you're 83 years old in the audience today, that you can do and convert your wet finger income to business income and reduce your time burden doing it without spending all the time and money that I have. So, um, I'm going to go into a little bit of my history. Uh, when I was uh, in dental school as a junior in 1999, I uh, had a wrist injury. They told me I might not be able to practice dentistry. So unfortunately, I thought about, well, what, I could do other things out of dental school, certainly. Well, I thought about what income I could produce out of dental school without being a dentist, and it was pretty bleak. We can't do much of anything without our two hands. So that's what caused me to say, what can I do with my dental degree that can give me income without using my two hands? Because when I was golfing with my brother and my wrist had a problem, the wrist surgeon said, we might have to fuse your wrist and you won't be practicing, or at least practicing very well or very long. So anyway, um, I ended up interviewing uh, 72 dentists on their ideal uh, transition strategy. 32 of them offered to sell me their dental practice. Went on to purchase about 12 practices in the first seven years out of school. Had 28 associates, learned how to do it. Uh, had some successes, had some failures, but more importantly, developed kind of a mentorship model um, to grow multiple locations and co-invest with dentists on their first locations. Had a great time, did a ton of lunch and learns around the US, ended up loving dental transitions, and ended up purchasing a transition seminar company called Phasing Out. That's the brochure from long ago. Um, I don't know if you can see my, my 30 year old face up there, but this was the brochure that would go out. I'd teach a full day seminar on America's top three transition strategies. Uh, I ended up teaching groups because that's what I did out of dental school, had 12 locations. And as I taught groups, I started to work with the larger groups, like Heartland, Heartland uh, started to work with on a variety of platforms and expansion and clinical stuff. So I ended up getting a lot in the groups, was a member of the American Academy of Dental Group Practice, where we'd sit at a table with the big DSOs, went over their marketing. And so really what a DDSO is taking all the goodies from the big DSOs, all the business strategies, because they've got some smart business guys, and moving them over to the private practice realm. That's what we're talking about today. Um, for those of you that are reading this book, there are thousands of these books out there, you can follow along. Although we'll be going very quickly through it, this book, Transition Time, maps out the 14 modules needed to convert, once again, from high taxes to low taxes. Number two, from wet finger income to business income. Number three, to auto automate every vertical that you drive excellence down and derive your streams of income. So, what did phasing out teach me? I taught uh, uh, 36 seminars around the US to thousands of retirement age dentists and did 480 some transitions. What did it teach me? Well, it taught me that the ADA statistic is true. These guys that I were seeing were in no financial place to do a transition. They shouldn't be transitioning out of practice. They had not built their streams of income coming into their lives so that they could actually transition out of wet finger dentistry. So the st statistic is that only 6% of dentists by the age of 59 and a half can actually financially afford to transition out of practice. Number two, you can't save your way to true freedom. That's accumulation versus cash flow theory. Oh, Jennifer, if you wouldn't mind our, our little uh, board for drawing, I'm gonna draw some things coming up uh, in, in a bit here. That'd be awesome, Braden, if you could help with that. You can't save your way to freedom. So, so, uh, so meaning, 
let's say your goal as a dentist is to save three million dollars in a qualified retirement account. Once you transfer that $3 million into 3% interest, which is generally what the financial advisors advise, that's gonna kick off, that $3 million is gonna kick off at 3% fixed interest rate, about $90,000 a year pre-tax, which is $45,000 a year after tax for you to live off of. Now, for those of you that don't think you could live off $45,000 a year, that, that's right. It's not about accumulation, it's about the cash flow that you produce while you're in practice. So I learned, you cannot save your way to a healthy retirement. You can't get two million, three million, ten million in the bank and feel like it's okay to, to retire. So that's number two thing I learned. The number three thing I learned is a lot of these dental offices were doing a lot of things improperly. Meaning, if you take a Bill Williams here and you slide him into any of these offices, that office is gonna go to two million, three million, four million, five million. So what I learned is the opportunity is in what I call value added acquisition and then equity harvesting. Value added acquisitions and equity harvesting. What does this mean? It means that there are hundreds, there are thousands of dental practices out there that have a staff, that have equipment, that have a couple thousand patients that are waiting for people like you guys that are watching this right now to go in there and change every uh, key performance indicator and increase that practice. Once you've increased that practice, then we need to find out how are we gonna have an investment return on that? Because yes, we love our dental practices, we love maybe acquiring a dental practice, but how are we gonna truly have an investment return by empowering the new dentist? by empowering the new dentist. That is called a mentorship program, where a dentist who's seasoned, like Bill Williams, says, come on, young guy, let's, 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 let's buy this practice together. Let's do it. Because I, Bill Williams, have built a $5 million practice, and I had to go in with you, young guy. You get all my stuff. All I ask of you, young dentist, new dentist who's never owned a practice, who has dental school debt, all I ask of you, young dentist, is two hands to work with. You work a full work week, okay? And we're gonna go into it together. All I ask is that you can work and you have your dental license in that state. So we're gonna get into that. The real opportunity is in value added acquisitions. Last thing I learned is that you've gotta automate processes with funnels rather than employees to create an ideal business. An ideal business, I'll, I'll give this definition a couple times, an ideal business is a business that you can leave for 12 months and you come back and it's doing better than when, when you left it. How many of you can honestly say that if you left your dental practice for 12 months, that if you came back, it would be doing better than it was when you left it. Now, obviously that's very hard with the dental practice, clearly, which is why we're gonna be going over different streams of income that you can put in place that if you leave for a year, they're better than when you came back. Commercial real estate. I've been building my commercial real estate portfolio since 2001 for 17 years. My commercial real estate portfolio, whether I pay attention to it or not, it grows by 3% each year with the rental increases. It's a wonderful stream of income, and all of you, if you do in, invest in another location, or two, or 10 other locations, the real estate is with that deal 85% 80 80, of the time. So, um, let's cruise along here. I'll see if my clicker is working. I might need my friend. Yes, he did it. So I've done a lot of things the wrong way, but I've also done a lot of things the right way over the last 19 years. And after 19 years, I've, I've realized that you've got to find and add value to create value. You've got to find and add value to create value, meaning you've got to find a practice that um, is really not doing what it should as far as overhead, new patient flow, management systems. And then you've got to create value. If you go in and add another location to your group, if you're mentoring another young dentist in a platform like I'd mentioned before, and I'm gonna do this so our cameraman um, uh, doesn't have to go all over. And I like uh, Elijah's energy, so I'm getting close to him. And so, so, so um, you must, number two, you must build multiple streams of non-clinical income. So I found the 80-20 rule is true in dentistry. 80% of your time you should be clinically working with your hands while you're building your streams of income. 20% of the time, you should be building multiple streams of income. And then you must automate these. 
and automate them through funnel stacking for new patient flow mentorship, DDSO funnels, which we're going to get into. Next one, uh, so next one, we'll go through that. It's going a little slow, which is totally okay. So. The hard way, what was the hard way? The legal foundation for your DDSO. I spent um, about forty to $60,000 uh, building my own foundation in my group or groups. Um, today, a lot of attorney groups are uh, charging eight to 30,000. So, there are some attorney groups out there that only charge about $1,400, but most of these are, are ones that already have the documents, right? So I've got stacks of documents if you need them for putting things in place, the legal side. DDSO, multiple streams of income. So one of the streams of income that we're going to talk about is commercial real estate. Number two, building your own lab or building your own lab alliance, your own wholesale lab alliance with zirconia crowns that are not 110 or 79 or 61, but even lower than that. Um, uh, crown work is a huge one. Supply discounts for your group um, are, are a huge one. As far as streams of income, your own dental membership plan, not somebody else's plan that you're using or some other software, but truly building your own dental savings plan in your practice. Your own in-house financing plan is a biggie. Um, your DDSO itself, the management company, as you add value and build intellectual property into there, it receives income over time. So we're going to be going over some of these things. And then funnel stacking. Funnels. What's a funnel? I'll give a, just a kind of a precursor of what a funnel is. Funnels are websites 2.0. Funnels are websites 2.0. Everybody in dentistry is using a website with SEO, right? Once everybody's doing something, it's no longer as good or effective. A funnel is simply a interactive page that has traffic driven into it. And this interactive page has to have five components to make it really work well. Number one, a video of the actual doctor saying something as if that new patient was right there. Like, hey, this is Dr. Johnson. Thank you so much for checking us out. As you know, at our practice, we blah, blah, blah. And we're just here to kind of get to know you as a new patient. Go ahead and take a look to your left. There are a few new, new patient options that we have. Boom, boom, boom. Got to have some, some options right here. Boom, boom, boom. You've got to have a, a, an intriguing headline right there that, dry, that pulls the traffic in. But the important part of a funnel is not just the landing page, it's the second page and the third page and the fifth page that are interactive. Okay, if your website is a noun, you're in trouble. Funnels are a verb, okay? So funnels uh, have built within them one or two key sophisticated softwares, email automation, chat bots, all sorts of different things that connect these and truly make an interactive experience. So that was just a little precursor to funnels and how they automate because I'm going to be talking about them a little bit as key components uh, as we move along here. So, um, so what is the easy way? So how do you put some of this stuff together? Well, let me, let me go over the three secrets really quickly. I just went over, over them previously, and we're going to zip through them real fast. Higher taxes to less taxes. How to build a scalable, multi-doctor, multi-location group that is dentist-owned as opposed to associate-driven. That is dentist-owned as opposed to associate-driven. The average associate turnover is 18 months. That means you take two steps forward and one step backward oftentimes with associates. Not that there's anything wrong with that, having associates, but watch out what's happening today with all this education hitting the, hitting the area. What's happening is DSOs are having a tougher time finding employee associate dentists because there's so much content out there on ownership. So dentists around the country are doing startups, acquiring practices, desiring to be owners in groups. Those groups that put in place a model of ownership will get the very best dentists because the very best dentists are not interested in being employees anymore. And I'll describe that in a moment with the uh, dental cash flow quadrant. So dental cash flow quadrant. Um, first of all, secret one, let's get right into it. Higher taxes to less taxes, building a scalable multi-doctor group. So what we're going to do is take Mr. Well, I don't think we can take his belt off, but it's all right. We'll go right here. So dental cash flow quadrant. How does the tax situation work? Okay. So in that quadrant, we have A, which stands for an associate. S, a solo practitioner. DDSO, we'll call, we'll call that D. 
And then we have investor, okay? The associate has really no tax advantages, no equity, and you know what? Dentists are figuring this out, and they're figuring it out fast. With great podcasts out there like Mark Costas's and, and Bulletproof, they're figuring it out and figuring it out awfully fast. So they're going into solo practice ownership instead, which is great, right? Except solo practice ownership can be even more challenging. You're shackled to the practice. Sometimes you have a lot of debt with that practice and nowhere to go with it. High overheads. The ADA says our overhead as a solo practitioner is about 70%. Well, the average associate makes 30%. So what good is owning a practice if you're going to have the same net, right? So the solo practitioners are getting squeezed now as well. So with a DDSO, meaning a single location with multiple doctors, or multiple locations, takes advantage of all the goodies that the DDSOs, DSOs have out there. Okay, now this is where you start getting into better tax advantages. As, an, as, a, as a solo guy, yeah, you can write some stuff off, write a trip off because you visited, visited Jimmy in Hawaii, some fun things like that, whatever it may be that the associate can't do, but the DDSO is where you really start to get into tax advantages. Number one, with the new tax law, by having a DDSO, you get that 20% um, tax break or, or tax deduction. Hey, that's a good one because the DDSO, the separate entity, does a lot of non-clinical functions. Also, when you add owners and they buy into your practice, you're taxed at long-term capital gains rates. Ordinary income uh, gains rates are 40, 50 percent with state, some states. Ordinary uh, long-term capital gains rate is about half of that. So you're cutting your taxes in half with that function of the DDSO. So now as we earn income through the DDSO, now we become investors. I stands for investor dentist. Now we're investing in what we call income producing assets. Ever since 2001, I've made sure that I've spent 20% of my time investing in income producing assets. What that did for me is the age of 33, I retired from dentistry at age 33, right? And, uh, and that was after I started a mentorship program, did nine deals with young dentists, and uh, I'll go into that in a moment, but uh, I obviously couldn't stand still and be retired. You can only play so much golf. Uh, end up uh, st starting an implant company, building another group, and so on and so forth, and teaching. I love to teach. So, so investment has been a big part of my life. The income or profits, you can actually invest much of them pre-tax into income producing assets. So um, this is the dental cash flow quadrant. Um, ESPs are entrepreneurial satellite practices. By finding and adding value, we can um, uh, equity harvest. Equity harvesting is adding owners as opposed to partners. So let's cruise. I'll put this around here. And I'll skip a couple slides. This is the, uh, for those of you that want to look up the tax law, it's section 199A. And this is a very simple thing. For those of you on Facebook Live, this is the structure of how to set up a DSO or DDSO. You have your clinical entity, the DSO, and very simply, a business support services agreement or administrative services agreement that delineates the clinical from the non-clinical. That is in one of the pages of this book. So those of you following along, I think it's module six that has a bunch on this. This is the decreased overhead with multiple doctors in a practice. Secret number two is clinical income to business income. How to create multiple streams of income and verticals to provide freedom producing cash flow. And this can be in connection with your DDSO or mentorship program. Up here on our board, we've got that central entity is your DDSO or management company. Your practices then, kind of are managed by that, whether you have one practice, two practices, three practices, or four practices, and then the little bubbles outside of that, watch this, are things that you build on your own, your own dental savings plan, all that good stuff. So I'm going to have somebody come up here because it would be nice to hear from someone who's just built their own DDSO and vertical streams of income. We got Justin Lee. Justin, come on up here. I want you to describe the process that you went through to build your DDSO. I want you to talk about the second location you guys just purchased. He's got a partner, Dr. Rob Hubbard, and I hope this is working. But yeah, I, I think you can see it down there. But hey, but just describe that in, in three or four minutes, how that process went, building your own DDSO and the verticals. Sure, you bet. So um, about six months ago, uh, my partner 
Hubbard and I, uh, Dr. Hubbard, Rob Hubbard, uh, decided to go to uh, a course that Brady was given and teaching just on this topic. And we decided, you know, we want to grow from a single location to a multi-group location. Um, so we got involved with Brady and we started developing certain vertical companies. And one of those vertical companies was our private equity group. And that was our funding company that funded our second location. So we took a promissory note, we're actually being the bank. And we're actually getting money through our own investments that was driven through our company, which is our DDSO. Uh, so that was one vertical company. The second vertical company that we started was an in-house financing company called Freedom Pay. And so we are care credit and we're getting the money. So that was another vertical company. Uh, our lab was our third vertical company that we've started and we're kind of like a lab alliance to a wholesale dental lab network. And uh, we decided that uh, that was another avenue where we could add money to our vertical, non-wet fingered, right? Non-wet fingered side of our business. And so we've been very happy through all of it, but we've started these vertical companies that is primarily driven through our DDSO. Awesome, awesome. Tell me about the real estate side of things. That's another really vertical arm, your portfolio. It is. So our second location came with a building and we, uh, <clears throat> We did not uh, decide what well, we decided to own. We want to own the building because our DDSO is paying rent to ourselves. And then that rent from the DDSO that we're acquiring is paying off the practice purchase, which uh, of the building, mm -hmm. the building purchase. Uh, so that's another vertical uh, income stream there. Now, instead of using somebody else's dental savings plan, you guys actually branded your own dental savings plan, is that right? That's right, yes. Uh, we have a dental savings plan for uh, the office where patients that come in that have no insurance, they become involved in a membership plan. And that's driving new patients. And that's all intellectual property of the DDSO, the in-house financing plan, the in-house savings plan, the dental savings plan. Um, we're getting lab discounts, we're getting supply vendor discounts because of the negotiated fees we have because of the volume that we have running through the DDSO. And talk about the marketing, how to bring in uh, new patients through your dental savings plan. The mark, oh, click funnel. Click, yep. Yeah, funnels. Funnels are bringing those in, like I talked about earlier, traffic driven by different sources into a funnel with a video that brings them into your office and that educates them online and all that good stuff. So you guys are building something really awesome. You're building, I didn't mention this before, but you guys have about a quarter million dollars of equity in your building because of your new lease in it. So over time, what is it? What is the cash flow with your, I, 2,500 a month or something from the building, something uh, like about between 30, the least 3,300. 3,300 a month. And so with the, the neat thing is, as these guys grow, they've got a model, these vertical organizations that support the DSO to bring value to each new location that they add. And a new dentist out of school, he doesn't have any of this stuff. So when they start mentoring, and which they are right now, younger dentists, that's how private practice dentistry is gonna take back over the industry. Mark my words, in three to five years, the DSOs, because they can't find associates anymore because this information's out there, the DSOs are gonna start selling off their practices. Why? I've been involved in a lot of private equity deals. I just sold out of a company to private equity. When the profit margins go down a little bit, private equity runs for the hills. And when they run for the hills and the DSOs don't have their money, guess what? They start selling practices off. I just bought a practice this week from a DSO. 2,700 patients for $50 a patient coming in, right? The DSO owner, who's a friend of mine actually, called, he and I chatted and said, hey, we're looking at doing this and that, and you know, what do you think? I said, yeah, of, of, of course. So my goal is that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands, of practices that the DSOs now own would be purchased by you guys by myself, I am actively, but what I'm doing is to teach you guys how to do this so you can buy them and buy value added practices. The DSOs pay lots of money for practices, don't they? You've all heard about your friends who sold to a big DSO for this much money. Is that a smart investment for the private equity company to buy a $2 million location for 5 million? Do the numbers work on that? Everybody knows it's not, it, it, it generally doesn't work very, very well. We've got to get in the mentality, we're buying low, finding value, and adding value. We want to be the beneficiaries of those large sale prices. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Give him a, give him a hand, guys. 
So, in module number 10 of this book is all about commercial investing. I don't buy any buildings retail. I buy them all wholesale. I buy them from the banks, dead in the water. And, and I'm giving them low, low offers. So, I'm going to go over a little bit of real estate in the nine minutes we have left. This is their expansion plan. Justin and Hub Rob Hubbard's expansion plan. Because they're adding owners, they're not taking on debt, they're releasing debt. As you add owners and empower other dentists to own, they're taking on money rather than taking on more debt to add locations, okay? Then their private equity company gets paid back, makes its income and equity, and they empower other dentists to be owners. That, by the way, if you can't read that, it's all in the book. There's a free book offer for everybody at the end of this. I wanna give away 10,000 books this week. It's gonna be a lot of replays on Facebook. 10,000 books this week. Of the thousands that are already out there transforming certain dental offices around the US, I want you guys to be one of them. 10,000 books this week, gonna be a free book offer at the end of this. This is another guy, I wish he was here, John Pazink. Generally, our organization, the DDSO Alliance, works with generally the top 1% of practices, right? The ones that are ready to move on, to move on to, to, the, to the new opportunity. But those practices that we work with, then in turn do what I did a decade ago, mentor all the new dentists. They're the ones that are mentoring. So what we do is teach the ones that will be the teachers. And I'm gonna go over a mentorship funnel, how you don't have to go through everything I did in the mid 2000s to create your mentorship funnel, you can simply clone my funnel. The funnels that I spent $45,000 on just in the last five months alone, you can clone and actually have as your own. This guy's John, that's a book he's writing. You didn't mention your book coming out. He's coming out with a book, the title of, what's the title of your book, Justin? Yell it out. The Avenue to Practice Ownership Freedom. The Avenue to Practice Ownership Freedom is his book, which will be the gateway for young dentists coming in and owning their first practice. This guy's is the blueprint for practice ownership success. And he's got some bullet points. Three ways how to eliminate dental school debt quickly. Seven ways how to find your first ownership opportunity. So what we're doing here is creating an environment where hundreds of groups around the US, hundreds of groups around the US are mentoring the next generation. Right now, who's mentoring our next Next generation. We dentists have allowed the DSOs in the schools to go and do lunch and learns, giving their wonderful student debt repayback packages while they're employees of the DSO. No more, there's better strategies. I bought a practice the day I graduated from school. I've never been an associate and neither do any of the dentists in school right now. And the ones that are in DSOs need to jump out of the DSO and start building their own future. And that's what these books are all about. This one is a book for people who already have a practice that are in the top 1%. These books like Justin Lees or John Pazinks, who's up in Indiana with five lo four locations right now, who's built his own vertical companies and is getting out there, those books are for the next generation. Um, so he has the same plan expanding throughout Indiana in different regions and his seed partners, his new dentists that open new locations, those are his mentees and his mentees get to use all the intellectual property that he has built through his dental savings plan, all the in-house financing plan, his lab, supply discounts, all that fun stuff. So this is another guy. Um, uh, he's up in Minnesota. There is two new trial partners. He came to one of my seminars two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. Met me before I uh, sold uh, the, uh, my interest in the implant company. And uh, he said, Brady, got a lot of debt. In fact, I got 1.4 million of debt and I'm 60 years old. Is that a problem? I said, yeah, it's a, it's a problem. So he sold two ownership chunks, formed his DDSO, and now instead of having 1.4 million of debt with two locations, he's got, you know, a big chunk that's in his own private equity company doing exactly what Justin's doing, taking his own money and being his own private equity company. Why are we allowing private equity companies to buy dentistry? Let's be our own private equity companies and let's not spend four million to buy a practice. Let's spend 100,000 here and 200,000 here and grow that practice. Here are what I paid for my first five practices, 8,000, 103,000, 20,000, that was at the kitchen table, I wrote a check for a five operatory, $550,000 practice. Let's be the ones that are buying these at a value and passing that value on to new dentists. 
I'll try to get off my rant, I have trouble here. Um, here's a building I bought, uh, it had 2.2 million of debt on it. 15 treatment center, European day spa. I bought it from the bank for uh, around $600,000, right? Um, it's 9,000 square, square feet. There's now 15 op dental pr practice in there. It's third month, it did 500,000. It's third month, it did $500,000 as a startup. Scratch start, third month, $500,000. It's got four full-time partners now. But I've been doing funnels a while, and funnels are what drive new patients into new locations very, very rapidly. This one I bought, I bought this one within a week. It's a blockbuster building. Who knows that retail is moving out because Amazon Prime is moving in, huh? So what I'm doing is buying the strip malls, right? Is Blockbuster the, the, the hit right now or Netflix and stuff, right? That's right. So I picked this up. It, 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 was, it, it was for sale for $389,000 and, and it was uh, for $43 bucks a foot. I got it down to like $36 bucks a foot and just a $10,000 $10, down payment. It's now got three tenants in it, a dental office, a group, a blood lab, and a chiropractic office. The value of that building when I bought it was 330. It's worth 1.8 now. So the day I moved in, ever seen these pre-leasing condo signs? I get all my leases signed before I buy the building. Therefore, the day I closed, it went from being worth 330,000 to 1.8 million. The other spa, the day it closed, it went from being worth $650,000 to $1.7 million. So don't forget real estate. Now I've got a long history in real estate, and it's in module number 10 of this book, and I'll get you the book for free for having to bear with me for 50 minutes, and I'll, and I'll go over some of this fun real estate stuff. But this should be a big part of your residual income that fits the ideal business. You leave for 12 months, and it's better than when you came back. Um, so right now we've got early career dentists with debt and late career dentists ready to retire. This is dentistry's un untapped opportunity. In 2006, I did nine mentorship practices. You go in 50-50 with a young dentist. You're the big financial safety net. You bring all your goodies. He gets the first $12,500 every month. That's his income. And then you split profits after that. Really, really easy. You bring the business stuff. There's how it works. You go in 50-50, the mentor dentist, the new dentist. And then after three years, he can buy you out and you make two hundred fifty to $500,000. Or he says to you, you know, Bill Williams, I've had a great time being with you. Let's keep growing this thing. And you grow it together, add locations, add owners, and add value. Secret three, how to automate through dental funnel stacking. Austin, come on up here for a second. I want you to chat for a bit. Dental funnel stacking, you can automate your new patient flow through, um, let's, let's click through here. I'm trying to click. I've talked about that at the beginning. This is a funnel map through Funnelytics. It's basically, it shows how people are driven through a funnel. I'm gonna have uh, Austin speak about this in a second. This is the landing page for a typical funnel for a dental savings plan. That's on page in the verticals, I think it's module number four that it goes over. And uh, I'm gonna have you chat at the end as the book slide is up, just because it's, I've only got a minute left here. Um, I'm going to have hit, uh, Austin talk about Facebook chatbots, text automation, email automation. Here's the sad part. I'll give you a sad part in my life. I spent m m too much money on funnels, automating my own business, and then I met Austin, and Austin tweaked my funnels, right? And uh, there's an interview with Alex Gamber with, with Austin. I'm going to cruise through that, bud. Sorry. Um, tweaked my funnels. 700% greater return. This is the funnel Yoda right here. It's a funnel Yoda. He uh, teaches other people around the world how to drive more traffic, how to build uh, a very, very successful funnels. And this one right here, do you see Justin Leith at the upper right? I'm using it because of him. This is the mentorship funnel. This is all the young dentists go on to here and they find mentorship programs around the US and click for more information. So if you're thinking you have to find the young dentists, forget about that. There's a funnel for that. It automates the new dentist. So if you want a mentorship program, program. This is how they connect. This is the money I've spent on funnels. Right here, that's one wire transfer for $12,500. I went to Austin. I paid him 2000 bucks to get started on one. I did it with a couple clients of mine. 700% return, and it was ridiculous. So like I said, funnel cloning allows you not to spend all that, but to actually clone successful funnels, which is in here. So when you go through a process like this, 
building these verticals, figuring out what you're going to do using that book. We call it the DDSO Blueprint. There's actually a blueprint for doing all this good stuff. You can get it on the get it through the book, through the book. Um, I'm going to give you a free book offer in a second. But for those of you that really are engaged, really want to do some of this stuff, where we talk about real estate funnels, the DDSO, we got a meeting in Scottsdale. June 22nd and 23rd, a meeting in Scottsdale, June 22nd and 23rd at the Phoenician, five-star resort. We got a special room rate, 650 at many times of the year. Got it for 180, just gorgeous. If you wanna come, um, then when, you are, when you're texting, there's the invitation for it, it's our DDSO Alliance. When you're texting to get the free book, You'll also get prompted if you want to go to the meeting. So if you want this book, if you felt like you were drinking, like Peter Bolden said, from a fire hose, and you want to incorporate some of these strategies, that's my treat to you. I want to transform dentistry, give it back to the dentists, out of the DDS DSO's hands and into the DDSO's hands. Just text this to that number. Just text free book to 31996. Just text free book all one word, free book, lowercase if you want, to 31996. Um, last one right here. If you want to meet at this conference, usually we do one-on-ones, but we can't do that because a lot of you are Facebook Live. So if you want to chat with me or Austin or any of our team members, just text BFC. Brady Frank Consulting Meeting to 31996. And now I'm going to have the wonderful Yoda of funnels talk real quickly about automation of your dental savings plan funnel and maybe just use that as an example of the dental savings fund funnel. How you automate that, how you bring people into the dental savings plan. Well, well first to, uh, to improve Dr. Frank's funnels, what we did was split testing. We split test the copy, the images, and the video to see what converts best. And that increases the lead volume, but not only do you need leads, but you want patients. So to convert leads into patients, we use automation. And we use three things to automate. First, email marketing. So whether a patient just opts in or makes an appointment or just visits the page, we can hit them with a series of proven email sequences that will encourage them to make an appointment, to follow up. We keep, we keep on them to make sure uh, that, they're, that they're taking the action that we want them to take. Secondly, text automation. We send them text messages, just like the emails, because a lot of people don't check emails. So text message automation is a new tool that really converts and really gets those patients in the door. And then lastly, we, we do chatbots. Chat chat that's right, Facebook chatbots. Uh, users can opt in to Facebook chatbots on your Facebook page. And that does two things. One, we can send them announcements, we can send them specials, new specials, but secondly, it can, it can serve as kind of a receptionist, answering common questions that users may have. So really, these three things, email automation, text automation, and the Facebook chatbots, can really save you and get more patients to the door without adding the payroll. Awesome, I appreciate Austin, high five bud. So he did awesome things for my funnels. I've got 16 funnels that I use to automate the business. About eight of them are for new patient flow. Sedation funnel, right? Sedation funnel, sleep apnea funnel, in-house financing funnel, dental savings plan funnel, Invisalign funnel, main practice landing page funnel. On the business side, you got a mentorship funnel, your wholesale dental lab funnel, a bunch of different funnels to automate it. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to end it at that. Thank you so much, Facebook Live. Thank you guys here live in Orlando. You guys were awesome. All right, All right Jamie. So let's see here. I know that there are some people who have some questions, and we have uh, 10 minutes so that we can ask some Q&A. Uh, let's start with somebody here in the room. Uh, who has a question here for Dr. Brady Frank? Way back. Um, so the question was, what's the resource that Dr. Frank uses for the wholesale real estate? So what you're going to want to do is go to LoopNet. It's the largest online resource for, and I'll move this back over, LoopNet online resource 
for finding deals that have gone dead and are now owned by the bank. What you're looking for is, since you're a dental office or you're expanding dental office, look for buildings that are partially vacant. Remember, commercial real estate without a tenant is worth a lot less. Therefore, if your dental office occupies a suite and you buy the whole retail center, then you've increased the value of that building and can get other stuff. What I like to do is convert buildings from um, regular retail use to medical dental. Medical dental lease rates are 33 to 50% higher than regular retail. So what I'll do is buy a retail building, convert it to medical dental, and get a chiropractor in there. Get a, a podiatrist and your dental group in there. The dental group acts as the anchor tenant. LoopNet, a big one. The other one is just Google for the town you live in. Google um, bank-owned buildings or REO buildings. I also like to do that with dental practices. When Bank of America takes back a practice, I like to buy the practice at usually 15 cents to 20 cents on the dollar. Good question. Brady, you're the six million dollar brain. You know, Lee Majors was a six million dollar man, but you think faster than most of us. So I wanna know, in that 20% of the time that you're not working on patients, if you're dedicating this time for your MSIs, multiple sources of income, how much work is that? And is that just another job? I mean, the regular dentist out here want to know, how do you put this together while you're running your practice? Yeah, that's a good question. So, I, uh, I uh, only work three days a week, four hours a day. So I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, 10 to two. And then I also take a week off every month. So I only work, Third, yeah, I wasn't good at math, 36 hours a month, right? And I enjoy it, I love it. Um, so what, what I have done is I have spent a lot of money on a lot of resources, and what my goal has been is to take my mentorship program from 2006 that worked really, really well, that I never should have stopped. What I did is I allowed all my, all my co-owners to just buy me out because I want to start an implant company. And I did, and I loved it, and the implant company worked really, really well, right? So I don't regret that, but what I said to myself, I looked back to 2001, I said, what was the thing in dentistry that gave me the highest rate of return? And, what that, and, and, it, and it aligned with my vision for dentistry, which is dentists owning, owning dentistry, not corporate groups owning dentistry, so to speak. And so here's what I found. The mentorship program allowed the greatest opportunity for both gain in the vision department, which is letting dentists take back dentistry, letting dentists be owners, letting new dentists be owners, okay, and the investment department, okay? So in a typical practice, I'll buy it with a young doc for 300 grand, right? Six ops, I'll actually use a real example, but, but one for $8,000, eight ops, no patients there, grew it to two million in two years, and so, a two million dollar practice is worth 1.6. I paid eight. I put about 150 of equipment in it. Let's round it up with supplies, 200,000. So the investment return was 1.4 million over two years. And there was cash flow split 50-50 during that time as well. So with a mentorship practice, you get cash flow monthly and you get big equity payouts down the road. And the question, I think Bill's question really is, Brady, how do you automate it? It sounds like you gotta create all this junk for it and you have to quit dentistry. Well, what I've done is I've taken all the resources you need, wholesale lab, recruiting engine, the ability to find real estate, the ability to find value-added practices, the management systems, all of that and put it in what's called a mentorship funnel. This has key opinion leaders from around the nation that all put their goodies into there and the young dentist has access to all of it as part of his mentorship relationship. And I built it all around what I call the two-year private practice GPR. You've heard of a GPR, right? A general practice residency? That's where a young dentist does a residency for two years and they get a stipend of $1,600 a month, right? This, this, they get to own their first practice and have a two-year residency, business and clinical, all wrapped in one. So I have built dentistry's first private residency related to practice ownership with the clinical in it. And what I do is I take all that 
and I clone it to you, and you've got to create two or three videos at the front end of it, but that's your portal to invest in. That's the value that your young dentist receives, and we call that being involved in the DDSO Alliance. So <clears throat> I like to say you need to spend about one hour a week on your mentorship program to do three deals a week, three deals a year. So to do three mentorship deals a year, you need one hour a week on a Friday. That's your calls with the new dentist. They want you as a mentor. The rest of it's all automated. Right? Like I said, funnels automate everything. So good question, Bill. And so I, I've built the verticals, which took a lot of time and continue to take a lot of time. Built those for you guys to use as value for the young dentist that you're going into with. Question. <clears throat> Is there a way to download the free book instead of receiving it paper form and paying for the shipping and handling. This is from Daryl, he didn't say where he's from. Got it, so Daryl's like, Brady, you just pitched us that we drop the DVDs and CDs and now you're sending a paper book? You schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> so Brady, is there a way that we could get it for, yes, we can work that out. Um, I don't know how, but we can work it out. If you'd also like PDFs of my three-part article series from Dental Economics, can get you those. In fact, why don't I just do that? I will PDF you for free if you email to, um, this is an addition to the book, those getting the book, I'll, I'll do this. The book is one thing and people that pay the shipping and handling, I don't want to devalue that for them because I really do think that you should have your pen out and you should be doing that. Maybe millennials don't do that, I have no idea. But go Brady at BFC dot services, Brady at BFC dot services and I will email you, not the book, but the Dental Economics three-part series, the DDSO series, and that is a prequel to the five-part series coming this July, each one with its own case study like Justin Leitz, top 1% practices around the nation that are expanding and mentoring and growing. Good question. Give it up for Brady. You guys are the best. Appreciate you, Elijah. Thank you guys, appreciate it. So we are actually going to be going to lunch until 1.15, that's Eastern Standard Time, and we will be uh, starting a new uh, link with a new feed uh, here in just about uh, 10 minutes. Any last comments, J Jamie? I think we're good. Enjoy your lunch. All right, we'll see you Thanks back at 1.15.